Hi, good afternoon. This is Anthony Ania of Ania Scanlon and Serignano. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about a last will and testament and, you know, what is necessary in doing and preparing the last will and testament. So I think the first thing to understand about a will, a last will is a writing where you can specify and spell out your wishes as to how the assets that are in your name alone on date of death are going to be disposed of. That is one of the most critical factors of a will that people really don't understand or are not familiar with. A last will and testament only controls assets that are in your name alone on date of death. So for example, if I have an account that says Anthony J. Ania in trust for Lauren Ania, uh, my daughter, well, that's not a probate asset. If I have an account that says Anthony and Joanne Ania, well, that's not a probate asset. Or I have an account that has a named beneficiary on it or is an interest for account. Or I have a life insurance policy, an annuity or an IRA that has named beneficiaries on it. That is not a probate asset. A probate asset is an asset that's in the individual's name alone without any alternate beneficiaries or individuals named on the account. So if there's an account, a bank account or a brokerage account that just says Anthony J. Ania, then if I have a last will and testament, that last will and testament will control that account. It will specify how that the assets in that account will get divided, to whom it will go, what percentages, or it could even be dollar amounts. Remember, <clears throat> A last will is this writing wherein you basically say to the world, this document is my last will and testament. This document specifies how I want my estate to be divided when I pass away, how, who is going to receive the property, what percentages, and if they're not alive, is there going to be an alternate beneficiary in the will for that individual? The other thing about the will, which is very important, is that you get to select who is going to be the person or persons or bank that's going to be the executor of your estate. Who is going to be the individual or entity that manages the affairs of your estate when you pass away? And the role of an executor is really to marshal the assets into the name of the estate, to gather all assets and title them into the name of the estate, and then to pay all of the expenses of the decedent, uh, the last illness, the funeral expenses, any outstanding bills that individual may have, and then at the very end, make the distribution of the assets to the individuals that are the named beneficiaries. Of course, there may be estate taxes, depending on the size of the estate that may need to be paid. They may, may be outstanding personal income taxes, that need to be paid. And those would also come out of the probate estate. The importance of naming an executor and an alternate executor is that that individual is the person that's going to be entrusted. If you have an account in your name alone and you do not have a, uh, a last will and testament, then when you die, that asset, that account will have to go through the process of administration. In administration, your estate goes to the individuals that are closest to you in terms of their lineal descendancy. So if you're uh, uh, survived by your spouse and you have no children, all would go to the spouse. If you have a spouse and children, 50% would go to the spouse and the other half would go to the children. So there is a law, there's a pecking order of individuals that were going to receive your estate when you die, if you don't have a will and you have assets that are in your name alone. So having a will is very important. I mean, it's, a, it's one of those critical documents that everybody should have because without it, you really don't get to designate who's going to re receive your estate and in what percentage they're going to receive it. And you also don't have the ability to designate who is going to be the individual that's going to be responsible for administering and handling your estate. So you hear these phrases all the time, the executor of the estate, the executor of the will. 
the executor is the person that's nominated under the terms of the will to be the individual to handle the estate. But that executor doesn't have any power or authority until the will is admitted to probate. Another thing that is a misconception, a lot of people will say to me, well, I have a will and therefore my will controls where these assets are going to go. Well, A, it all depends on how the title to the assets are held, number one. Number two, it also depends on with respect to the, the will itself is, are, are, have you named somebody specifically to receive those assets? Have you made a specific disposition of the assets? Do you have, for example, a what's called a pre-residuary disposition? Did you select somebody that's going to get the assets before your residuary estate? So in your will, you can have a specific disposition. You could say, I give $100,000 to my brother. And if my brother's not alive, then either the bequest shall lapse or it should go to his children. So there are many things that you can do in the will, including not giving assets to individuals outright. You could say in your will, I want X amount of dollars to be held in trust for the benefit of my children or my spouse. And the person that handles the administration of the trust is not the executor. It's the trustee that you named in your will. So you could have one person to be the executor of your last will and testament, the person to gather the assets, pay all the bills, and then if there is a trust to distribute the money to the trustee of the trust, who could be another person who's going to have the role of handling the trust administration, paying the income to the beneficiaries, paying any principal of the trust to the beneficiaries. Both individuals can be the same person, but they can also be different people depending on their skill levels and what kind of trust you have and how they get along with family members. So as you can see, a last will and testament has a lot of complexities to it. Assets can be specifically bequeathed or devised to an individual. They can be given outright to an individual who survives you, or they can be held in trust for individual or individuals. So for example, it's very common that a last will and testament says that when I die and my wife is not surviving, I give everything to my children in equal shares per stirpes. However, if my children are not surviving or a child of mine is not surviving and has issues surviving under the age of 25 or 30, that that, end of child, that grandchild's share will stay in trust until they get to the age of 25 or 30, because you don't want a grandchild to squander, let's say several hundred thousand dollars when they're 18, 20, 21. So you want the money to stay in trust for them and to be able to be used for their health, education, maintenance, and support. Well, the person that manages that money is not the executor of the will, is the trustee that you named in the will. So again, a lot of complexities, a lot of moving pieces, within a last will and testament. But in order for that will to be valid, it has to go through the probate process. That will has to be offered and accepted into probate in the county where you reside. So if you died and resided in Westchester County and you have a last will and testament, that will will be offered to probate with the surrogates court of Westchester County or Rockland or Putnam or Kings or Queens County or New York County whatever county it is that you resided to. But that process of going through probate from beginning to end can take nine months to a year. So that's one of the downsides of probate is that it can take a significant amount of time, nine months to a year to probate a will. There are also expenses, there are filing fees with the court, uh, there's going to be legal fees. So in many instances, it's better for an individual to have a, a trust rather than have a last will and testament to avoid this probate process. In terms of the actual validity of the will, the will has to be signed and dated and have at least two witnesses. So the will has to be signed by the testator, the person making the will. It has to be dated and there must be at least two witnesses who view the signing contemporaneously. So it's a very important factor 
in terms of the last will and testament being admitted to probate. Then there's always when you have the probate process and depending on the age and the capacity of the individual that's signing the will, now you have the possible specter of a last will being contested, objections being filed to the will, where the will is offered to the court for probate, but there's somebody that was left out, a child, a grandchild, and that child or grandchild or even a spouse objects to the admission of the probate of the will. And then there are grounds for objecting to the will, undue influence, fraud, lack of testamentary capacity. Uh, you know, you know uh, these are the things that you know, happen when a will is admitted to seeks to be admitted to probate. Another reason to avoid probate is to avoid this kind of potential litigation, because without the probate of the will, there's the trust. The trust has named beneficiaries, and the persons that are not named as beneficiaries in the trust don't get any notice. There's no filings with the court. All right. So there are a lot of reasons to avoid probate in my mind. It's not that probate is the end of the world. We, we do a lot of probate and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's done all the time, but it's definitely uh, more time consuming and more expensive. So having a will is important, but having maybe a will that pours over into a revocable trust and also having a, a trust that you've done for Medicaid planning purposes may be even more valuable. So thank you again. My name is Anthony Ania. I'm a member of Ania, Scanlon, and Seriano with offices in White Plains and Somers, New York. And my office number is 914-948-1500. I hope you found this uh, program informative and thank you for your attention and time. Bye-bye.